In this SDK demo, I'm going to use SDK to show the phases of the moon. I always found this to be kind of a hard, complicated concept to visualize when I learned it in school and when I've taught it to kids in STEM outreach activities. Uh, but SDK makes it really easy to visualize the locations of the Earth, Moon, and Sun that contribute to the different phases of the moon. In my SDK scenario here, I have one view of the 3D window here that shows the moon, and it shows exactly what the moon looks like from here at AGI's headquarters in Exton, Pennsylvania. So this is the view that I would see if I was sitting outside at AGI at night and looking at the moon. You can also see in my 3D view here of the Earth where AGI is. It's this little pin drop here in Pennsylvania. And I'll use this view of the Earth to show the kind of relationships between the Earth, the moon, and the sun. My third window here is just a little HTML viewer where I've pulled up a website of Space Weather Live, and that just shows a calendar of the month of September and the phases of the moon starting September 1st. So that's what I'm going to be using for this scenario is a September 1st start time and looking at the phases of the moon through September. September actually starts off with almost a full moon. So the 3rd of September is what is called the full moon. But even on the 1st, we're pretty much there. You can see that here in our moon view window. So this is September 1st, and you're seeing the moon face pretty much illuminated already. So it's almost full, but I'll go ahead and just jump us here to the 2nd and 3rd of September where we actually have the full moon. So in this view, I've got my yellow arrow here that points from the moon to the sun. So you can see that during the full moon, the sun is lighting up the entire face of the moon that we're able to see from Earth. And that's what causes the full moon. So the moon doesn't produce its own light, it just reflects the light from the sun. And so that's what contributes to the phases. So right now with full moon, the sun and the moon are in line and the sun is on the opposite side of the Earth, as you can see in this window, from where we're standing here in Pennsylvania. And then the moon is a straight line ahead. So the entire front surface of the moon gets illuminated by the sun, creating what we call a full moon. I'll skip ahead in time to last quarter. So that's around September 10th. So this is where about half of the moon is illuminated by the sun. So in this case, you can see that yellow arrow pointing out to the sun is now on the left side of the moon as seen from AGI's headquarters. And so only that left side of the moon gets illuminated by the sun and the right side is dark. And so from here on Earth, we see that as you know half of the moon in the sky. But of course, we know the whole moon is there during that time. So here is a view back on Earth. We've got our pin drop of where we are in Pennsylvania and the sun is to the left and there's the moon straight ahead. So you can see that geometry that creates this kind of moon. So after the last quarter, our next moon is the waning crescent. The waning crescent happens around September 14th. So this is when we're able to see just that little sliver of the moon kind of looks like a fingernail clipping, if you will. So in this case, the sun is still kind of over to the left of the moon. You can see that arrow. It's just that now it's starting to be a little bit more behind the moon. So instead of getting the full left side of the moon illuminated, we're just getting a little sliver of it as the sun-moon relationship kind of starts to change and the sun gets behind the moon. So from Earth, here's that configuration. So we've got our moon straight ahead and the sun over to the left but behind. The next view we'll have is the new moon, or this is when we're not really able to see a moon in the sky at all. At this point, the sun, earth, and moon are kind of all in one line again, just like for a full moon. It's just that now the sun is on the other side of the moon, and the sun is illuminating the back side of the moon, but we're not able to see it. So to us, the moon does not appear to be illuminated at all. Sometimes all three get in one exact direct line, and it can happen during the daytime, and that's what we call a solar eclipse, where the moon actually blocks the sun. Um, and that's very cool. We had one happen a couple of summers ago. And, you know, if you were right in line with that solar eclipse, you basically went into darkness during the day. So that's another interesting phenomenon that you can see. So here is that configuration. You can see that the arrows pointing to the sun and moon are very close together, almost in direct alignment, but not quite. But it's enough that, you know, we're not able to see any illumination here from the sun on the moon. The next phase of the moon is the waxing crescent. So here again, we're seeing that little sliver, but this time it's on the right side because the sun is starting to move towards the right. It's still behind, but towards the right. 
And so we're starting to get a little bit of illumination again. And then next we have the first quarter. So this is about half of the moon being lit up on the right side from the sun. Um, and then lastly, we would end up back at, at the beginning of October, we would end up back at another full moon because the sun is just kind of going around the moon from the perspective of, here, of where we are here at Earth. So I've shown this in our different 3D views here using the lighting conditions that are shown within our 3D views in SDK, but you can also visualize this and actually do the analysis using our EOIR sensor. So our EOIR sensor type stands for electro-optical infrared, and you can use that to simulate what a telescope would see. So we actually have a telescope here at AGI. This isn't exactly the same telescope, but it's probably kind of similar. So if we had a telescope at AGI and we had it pointed here towards the moon, Here's what we'd be able to see at this point in time. So we're able to see about half the moon, and it's oriented similar to here. The sensor might be just a little bit shifted in its orientation, but you're able to see these different phases through our representative telescope here with our EOIR sensor as well. And you can look at those different phases, like the waxing crescent. You get that sliver in the EOIR sensor. So I showed that by stepping through it, and if I just go ahead and let my scenario play for the full month of September, you're going to see those lighting conditions change as the moon and sun and earth relationship all change over time. And that's it, thanks for now.